Let's talk about a less obvious reason to use on push change detection in Angular, which is really just a happy side effect of its intended purpose to increase performance by reducing change detection cycles in your app. So toward the end of this video, I'm going to show you a specific and I think very cool example of when this less talked about benefit of on push change detection helped me recently. So a couple of super quick definitions first. What is change detection and what is on push change detection specifically? To give you the very short version, things in our app change. For example, I'm going to take a photo with my camera and now that photo needs to be displayed in this list. So in order for this to work, Angular needs to know when something has changed in order to re-render our components. So this video isn't about how Angular's change detection system works in general. So I'll link to some more resources on how it is that Angular is able to achieve this. But let's focus specifically on on push change detection. So on push change detection is a sort of stricter change detection strategy that is opt in. So if I just open up one of my components here, you can see in the component metadata that I have this change detection option and I'm setting it to change detection strategy dot on push. So what this does is it makes Angular's change detection tasks easier. So when you use on push change detection, you are basically telling Angular, hey, don't worry about all that hard work detecting if something has changed. Let's make a deal. The only time you need to worry about re-rendering a component is when a component's event handler is triggered, like a click, for example. The async pipe is being used in the template and a new value is emitted or when any of the components inputs have changed. So on that last point about the input changing, change detection will actually only be run if the input reference changes. So in short, what this means is that if you supply an object as an input to a component and mutate that object by directly changing some property on it, it won't trigger change detection because it is still the same object and has the same reference. It has just been mutated. You would need to supply the input with an entirely new object in order to trigger on push change detection. So if we want our changes to actually appear to our users, for example, if I want that photo to actually display in this list after I take it, we agree to follow a specific set of circumstances that are allowed to trigger changes. Everything else Angular can safely ignore. If we break these rules, then we're going to make some change in our application, but Angular will not show it. So since Angular doesn't have to worry about rendering changes in any other circumstances, it naturally means performance will be improved because there is less work to be done. But I don't think that's the best thing about on push change detection, and it's not what this video is about. It certainly is a good thing, but for a lot of apps, the performance difference might not even really be noticeable. So you would think this might be one of those, oh, you only need to use on push in X, Y, Z circumstances. But personally, I think it's a good idea to use on push everywhere all the time for all apps. Why? Because it will force you to architect your apps better. Two specific ways it can help push you is in creating more modular components and using the async pipe for streams. There are other benefits, but I'm going to focus on this for this video because it lines up with the example I want to show you. So like writing automated tests or enabling TypeScript strict mode or uh, avoiding manually subscribing to observable streams, using on push change detection is one of those sort of forcing factors that can help guide you to creating better code. If you consistently use these things, you will run into situations where you are like, oh crap, this doesn't work. Uh, that's annoying. How am I supposed to make this work with on push change detection or, or why is TypeScript complaining about this? It can be annoying, but it's a great automated feedback mechanism that lets you know your code could be better. If you don't have these annoying things getting in the way, then you will likely just keep on doing what you are doing because there is no reason for you to think that it could be done better. So it's kind of like having a mentor or code reviewer without actually having one. Okay, so if you've had enough of the lecturing, let's get into the actual example now. So this is probably one of the coolest refactors I've done recently, just in terms of the sheer size of the improvement. So what we are looking at now is an application I have been refactoring, and I'm going to show you how using on push change detection helped force me to improve the architecture here. 
The old version of this application did not use on push change detection and this one does because I default to on push for everything now. So the general idea is that this application allows a user to take a photo of themselves once a day, just as I showed you before, and then it will play back those photos in quick succession. So sort of like those time-lapse videos where someone takes a photo of their face uh, every day for 20 years or something like that. So the code we're looking at on screen now is the smart component for this uh, little uh, slideshow container modal that we're looking at. So to begin with, I ported this code over from the old application almost as is. And to play the slideshow, I just have a set interval that loops through all of the photos, one every half a second. And it's going to be changing the source of an image inside of the template by just setting this current photo class member. So the set interval changes this class member, and that is what the image in the template is going to be using as its source. So I'm just triggering that play slideshow method in this ng on init. I have to keep track of the interval. So when it's destroyed, I'm clearing that. And also once we get to the images or they're trying to sort of restart the slideshow or something like that. And this all works just fine with the default change detection strategy. A set interval is one of the specific things Angular keeps an eye on in order to react to changes resulting from it. But this will not work with the on push change detection strategy we have a set interval changing a class member value, which is being displayed in the template. But remember the circumstances from before that would trigger change detection with the on push strategy. A component emits an event, the async pipe is being used, the input to the component has changed. So none of these have been satisfied, so change detection will not be triggered and the effects of this set interval changing images will not be rendered in the template. And we can see that if I try to play the slideshow now, I just get one kind of terrible looking image. But what I want to be happening is all of these images cycling on the screen. So I was just happily going about my business, porting code over when I realized, oh yeah, the slideshow doesn't work anymore because I'm using on push change detection now. So now keeping this code in mind, let's have a look at the code that I changed to get this working with on push. Okay, so this is the code modified to work with on push change detection. And before we get into this specifically, it is worth noting that uh, the sort of cheaty approach here is that you can always just inject the change detector ref and manually force Angular to perform change detection whenever you want by calling its detect changes method. So after we add our new photo, we can just manually call detect changes. But manually telling Angular when to perform change detection is a bit of an ugly solution to the issue and misses out on the benefits I'm talking about in this video, specifically helping you to write better code, not hacky workarounds. So perhaps the best solution here is to rely on the async pipe, which is what I'm doing now to display this photo. So the async pipe is also kind of cheaty really, since it does basically the same thing behind the scenes by using the change detector ref to trigger change detection but unlike manually triggering change detection yourself, using the async pipe leads to a more desirable architecture. And since Angular is doing it behind the scenes themselves, you don't need to worry about messing with that kind of stuff. So the way that I was able to achieve this, the way I was able to convert to using the async pipe here, is that instead of using a set interval in this component and manually setting a class member, I would instead create a stream of the photo changing and subscribe to that value with the async pipe. So this is going to pass in one photo at a time to this app slideshow image component. And then that is going to handle actually just displaying whatever photo is passed in. And this isn't a video about RxJS stream, so I don't really want to get too deep into this now, but I will quickly explain what's actually happening here. So I'll just pop this out a little bit so that you can uh, see the full comments. So what happens is that I've got this input setter here. So what will happen is that whenever the home component passes in some data to this slideshow component through its input, it is going to take that stream of photos. And every time that input changes, this logic is going to get triggered because we're using a setter for our input here. And from that observable, what we're going to do is create a new observable. And this new observable is called current photo. So we're passed in an array of photos or rather an observable of an array of photos. 
and we want to create an observable stream of just one photo. So we take our initial observable and then we're going to switch to a new observable stream. So we're going to use the value of the photos passed in, that photos array. We're going to create a new stream from that and we're reversing it just because we want to show the photos in reverse order. And then this is the tricky part. So what we want to do from those photos is we want to emit one at a time with a delay of 500 milliseconds, just like we were doing with the set interval. So again, we're switching to another new observable stream from the one that we just created. And this time we're creating a stream of just one photo and we're using the delay operator to delay that one emission from emitting by 500 milliseconds. So this observable stream will wait 500 milliseconds, emit its value, and then it is completed. And since we're using concat map, that's going to wait for that first emission to complete, that first stream to complete, and then it will move on to the next one. And then the same thing will happen again, and it will move on to the next one. So in our case, we have three photos. So we have a stream of the first photo, it finishes, then we move on to the stream of the second photo, it finishes, and so on. Now I do get that this code might be a little bit hard to follow if you're not pretty comfortable with RxJS operators, but this is why I think RxJS is so valuable and why it's worth sort of learning this sort of new way of thinking is because we are able to condense so much of that complexity that we had before just into this organized pipeline of a few RxJS operators. And now if we click play on our slideshow, you'll see that it works and we get that effect of photos cycling through. So in this case, on push change detection pushed me to make my code more modular by creating a presentational component that has the role of displaying the photo. So I needed to create this component so that I was able to pass in data from the stream that we created using the async pipe. And it also led to this more reactive declarative style of code by using just this one stream here, which is an insane improvement over the old code. The set interval is gone along with the need to clear the interval. We can get rid of both the ng on init and ng on destroy and the entire play slideshow and clear interval methods. So I was able to replace all of that imperative style code with basically just one input setter that creates a stream. So this might be a bit of an extreme example here, but I hope it illustrates the point I'm trying to make. And that is that on push change detection can make your apps better, not by improving their performance, although it can, but by helping you write better code. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you have a great day. Uh, if you feel like leaving a like or subscribe, that would be much appreciated. And I hope to see you in the next video.